ocean is teeming with life. The problem is most of the life in the ocean we actually can't see. You usually think of whales, of dolphins, of fish, but think even smaller than that. The ocean is filled with tiny plants and animals called plankton. I'm actually from Nebraska. We don't exactly have a lot of oceans out there. Uh, to be honest, I had never actually heard of plankton before I showed up. I'm interested in finding out which plankton are where in the ocean, how they interact with their environment, how they influence the food web above them, where they're getting their food from. To do that, I tend to work in a lot of areas that fall between the cracks. So I'm somewhere between biology and hard engineering. So there are two problems when we want to look at something as small as copepods. One is that we have to really zoom in so that the most we can ever see is maybe about a thimble full of water at a time. The second is that even if you had a pop bottle full of ocean water, you may only find one or two or three copepods in that entire volume. So it turns out a great way to solve these two problems is by using holograms. When most people think of holograms, they think of rainbow colored 3D images taken using lasers. In the lab, I do something very similar. I use lasers to take three-dimensional images of plankton. I use the computer to take the three-dimensional image and split it apart into a stack of flat black and white two-dimensional images. We can scan through digitally and find those little thimbles that are hidden throughout the pot bottle. After I've created an instrument in the lab, I get to take it to the ocean where I can actually measure and observe plankton in their natural environment. When you go out on a cruise, we end up capturing hundreds of holograms with beautiful detail. You can see the entenules, small hair structures, parasites that are living on the plankton, egg sacs on copepods. We're coming back with pictures and data of things that people have never seen before. And they're, they're beautiful. We're able to find these plankton in their natural environment, doing what they do without disturbing them. They have no idea that we're taking pictures of them. So we're able to sneak up and spy on their world. I guess you could say we're almost like a micro paparazzi. Oh, there's, like usual, there's a complete mess in the lab. That means that we're working on stuff. Nick Loomis uh, was a young student who just came to MIT. He didn't know about holography or what it was. In fact, he didn't know what a Fourier transform was at the time. And I heard that and I was a little bit worried, but I didn't need to worry at all, it turns out. He's one of the most brilliant minds I, I've known. So right now, I'm just setting up some of the basics for uh, an experiment that we're planning on running next week. He came in and within just a few months, not only knew what Fourier analysis was, but understood all the wave equations for the holography, how it worked. Okay, so I've just set up an inline holographic system. Here's what I've got in order. It's a laser. And got right into it. He knows the hardware. He knows the software. He knows the theory. Collimated by this set of lenses over here. And he understands now uh, what plankton are and uh, why they're important. I use a whole bunch of different pieces. It's like a giant Lego set. I've even taken him on a couple of oceanographic cruises. And Nick just took to oceanography like a duck takes to water. He was really great. The MIT Museum is just a few blocks away from my lab. It's a chance to expose MIT researchers and MIT projects to the general public. In fact, our lab created a display to showcase our work with digital holograms and ocean-going systems. Most people, they don't know what a copepod is. So we wanted to be able to bring this microscopic world into the public's viewpoint. I am trying to find a copepod. So people are able to capture their own holograms directly there in the museum of real-life copepods. I'm trying to figure out how to use this. Then navigate in three-dimensional space. Oh, there's one. Oh, there's one. Scan through the volume and see what animals are where. It's cool capturing a moment in time that you can travel through. It is almost like a game because you get these copepods that come screaming across the screen and you're trying to capture a hologram right when there's one flying past. Or maybe you've got some copepod in some feeding pattern and you're waiting for it to get to just the right spot. And you're flying around in that hologram. You're trying to find all these little things that are hidden in there. Oh, that moves. Just discovered something new. There's all this information that gets distributed throughout the hologram. But if you find just the right spot, 
Whoa, cool. Oh, they go in and out. Oh. So it's like, boom, it all comes into focus in an instant. I get it. It's really nice to be able to just walk up to the museum from our lab and watch people interacting with our work, watch people getting into the science. It makes me feel like I'm doing something more important. I never imagined that I would be doing ocean science for a living. But that's what I did. I swapped the waves of grain for waves of ocean, swapped cows for copepods, and here I am. Thank you.